All right, uh, my name is Tito Sierra and I work at NCSU Libraries. I'm here to talk about a project um, called Smart Subjects. It's an, a, sort of a research and development project that I started a couple of years ago. Um, and so I'm happy to have this particular forum to talk about something that I consider kind of geeky that I probably couldn't get away with talking about at some other conferences. Um, basically, the agenda for my presentation, I'm going to talk about the concept behind Smart Subjects. Uh, why I built this tool, um, some applications of this tool in a production environment, um, some technical details about how the system works, strengths and weaknesses of the tool, and then some future plans. So the smart subjects concept is actually quite simple. The idea is that you take a user search query um, and it goes through a little engine and it basically spits out a list of related library subjects. Now I'll talk about what I mean by related library subjects uh, later on, but suffice, suffice it to say that um, it's a very simple tool that takes an arbitrary, uh, arbitrary text and spits out some subjects. So it's basically something like a subject recommendation engine. So I'm going to go through just three examples to show you how this tool uh, works. Uh, so basically in this first example, this is a search for uh, it's using the input of music therapy, and what the output of the system is, it says, oh, I think this thing is about, or your search is about music, uh, curriculum and instruction, maybe education. So this is basically what this, what this tool does. It takes an arbitrary text string and then uh, spits out some rec recommended subjects. Um, the second example here is a more sort of specialized technical term asymptotic stability, which is a concept in mathematics. Um, and here the smart subjects tool is saying, I think this is about bioinformatics, statistics, and math. So that seems to work pretty well. And then this last example, um, illegal immigration, so this is more of a, a social science type of query. And here the tool is saying that this is probably something to do with criminology, political science, and public administration. Zoology, um, again, this is a, I didn't say this system was perfect, uh, so it's a research and development project, but um, there are some sort of squirrely things that come in there, and those are things that I'm interested in figuring out how to solve. The motivation for this project um, partly came from uh, the initial work that I did in building the uh, quick search application, which is, uh, you might have seen a screenshot uh, Emily had in her presentation about our, our library uh, search tool. Um, and basically what I did in, in building that tool is I took, I took a look at the search logs and see what sorts of things are people using our search tool. What, what sort of queries are they entering in our search tool? And um, there's, a, there's sort of a variety of patterns and this presentation isn't about quick search but suffice to say that that tool is meant to sort of address different classes or different patterns of search. Um, this particular project, Smart Subjects, is directly focused on uh, what I call topical searches. Um, these are searches for things that aren't necessarily known items, but they're sort of searches such as animal behavior, diabetes, cancer. Um, it's not clear that that person is necessarily looking for a particular resource, but they want more information about that topic. Um, the way this relates to some of the other applications we have at NCSU is about two years ago, um, we launched a, a subject portal, a data-driven subject portal. Um, and basically what, what Smart Subjects is, is a way to connect people to those subject portal pages in a search environment. Because if you just index the subject portal's pages themselves, you wouldn't necessarily get a hit on them, especially when you search for something like asymptotic stability. Um, so in a way, it's sort of a, a way to connect users in a search environment to these subject portal pages. So here's a screenshot of the, um, the sort of the dump of all the subjects that are at NCSU and they group into, into major categories. Uh, again, some background on the subject browse thing. Um, it's a locally developed subject classification that launched in uh, 2005. It consists of a, a roughly 100 subject nodes and 12 top level categories. And the subject nodes are influenced by the curriculum of the university. So for example, NC State is a very sort of uh, science, agriculture, technology oriented institution. So we actually have a subject node called crop science. So this is not a, a subject classification that could easily be you know, useful at your institution, but 
Um, this is the one that, that they came up with. So our tool is basically recommending subjects within this classification. So in terms of the subject browse, here's an example of a subject browse page for music. Um, and here, uh, basically, uh, users can find information in four different categories. So they can find books about music, databases uh, for music, um, journals, the top journals in that particular field, and then some reference tools. So the intelligence behind this system is, at, you know, at some point uh, prior to launch, we had subject specialists that went through some work to basically map these resources to these particular subject domains. And here's a, a detailed view of the databases and articles tab of the subject browse page for music. So it's showing some top uh, subject recommended uh, databases within that subject. So in going back to this smart subjects idea, the idea of an input that spits out some subject nodes, um, we have, I have two applications that use this right now. Um, this should look familiar because it's similar to the screenshot that Emily showed. Uh, this is our quick search application. And if you look at the very top, we have this, what I call a module, which is called the Find Articles module. And basically here, um, it's, hard, it's probably hard to read the text, but let me zoom in. Um, here we have the integrated subject recommendations uh, in the web search tool. So if somebody searched for asymptotic stability, ordinarily in a, let's say, a fairly generic website search tool, they were not going to get any hits at all because that's not something that's going to necessarily be found on pages. But this tool will say, perhaps you're interested in these specialty research databases in these particular topics, bioinformatics, uh, statistics, mathematics, etc. So that way, when the user clicks on these, they can go to that databases tab and then find some, data, some articles of interest to them. Um, also, the other application that's in production is, I just uh, slapped on an open search interface to this tool. So if you go to a9.com, and you, it's very, the interface is very difficult to actually find columns now, but um, you could find our, you know, a column for this if you want to sort of experiment with it. The other benefit of open search is just a very simple XML format for syndicating search results. So um, when I go to actually integrate this tool in other applications, I'll probably just use the open search feed to, to retrieve that data and display it. Um, how it works, uh, basically um, the underlying system has roughly five steps. Um, the first is harvesting some available institutional data that we have at state. And the system right now uses course catalog descriptions and faculty publication citations. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Um, then what we do is take, create a text extract representation for each academic department on campus. Uh, some people refer to this as sort of a bag of words. The idea is that you create a surrogate, um, a large blob of text that's meant to be a surrogate for that particular department. Then you index these text extracts, and then you have some sort of retrieval system that goes and takes the user search and sends it to, uh, to see if it gets a signal in these academic department codes. And then there's a retrieval algorithm that goes and crosswalks the returned academic departments to our library subject classification, which is the 100 terms that I referred to before. So here's uh, examples of these text extracts that I was referring to. On the left, this is a, uh, a snippet of a text extract from uh, our course catalog. So as you can see here, I'm just going to read some of the text here. Advanced course in food chemistry with emphasis on proteins and enzymes of particular importance to foods. So the great thing about course catalog descriptions is that they have very rich vocabulary to describe a particular topic. And those are basically what I'm doing is mining that data. On the right, you see a text extract from our faculty publications repository. And very briefly, what that is, it's a database of article citations, articles written by faculty at NC State. So we also have an inherent relationship there that we can exploit, which is we know what department the faculty member is in. So we have an explicit association between these article titles and a particular academic department. So basically, grabbing all the titles and putting it into a huge text blob and saying, this is sort of representative of food science. So the, this is just a diagram showing how this system works. So on the left you have your data stores, 
and then I extract some data from it. And this only technically needs to be done, or has only been done once. So it's, you know, it took a day to do it, and then it's done. Um, and then I have these text extracts, and then I create a search index out of them. So in theory, the system scales so that I can go and add more source data. And the more source data I add, in theory, the better the recommendations will be. So it's very scalable. And then once those indices have been dealt, then the retrieval process, um, basically we take the user input, run a keyword search on that, find out what are the, you know, on the sur surrogate topical search indices, get a relevance ranked list of academic departments, dedupe and combine those. So the interesting thing is that if I get signals, strong signals in one collection type and another collection type, then those work together to really bring that particular subject to the top. And then I do a crosswalk from the academic departments and then our side, local subject classification. So the output of all this is just a list of library subjects. Uh, briefly, technology used. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. I used Swishy and it works great. And then uh, the retrieval processing is, is a PHP script, quite simple. Some strengths of this particular approach is that it's application and collection independent. So um, it, could, it could easily, easily be used in, in many different library applications. It could be used in a meta search application or a catalog or what have you, because it's, all it takes is a very simple input and it spits out an output. It doesn't, you don't have to have any sort of underlying cataloging to support this recommendation. It's very flexible. Um, and I think what I like about it is that it encourages broader serendipitous resource discovery. Uh, for example, the LCSH that we have in our catalog, the facets are great for you know, fine-tuning down to something, uh, a specific area. This tool is not really trying to solve that problem. It's sort of saying, well, it looks like you're interested in this particular subject area, did you know that we actually have this whole collection of great stuff in a related subject area that you're interested in? So it's meant to sort of encourage a serendipitous discovery. Uh, the two main weaknesses are false positives and zero hits. So false positives, you could say the example of zoology as a recommended subject for illegal immigration is a bad recommendation. So um, there are ways of solving that, basically by increasing the amount of uh, text that you have in your representations, in theory a lot of that noise should filter out. And then zero hits. Because of the nature of the content that I'm indexing, it's possible that you could enter in a highly specialized topical term, and my system doesn't really know what it is. And so that's a lost opportunity. So those are two sort of inherent weaknesses of the system. Um, some future plans. Um, basically, the way it's integrated now is very straightforward. You put in a search term and it gives you some subjects, so then you can go and, and access those subjects. Um, one of the ideas that I have is that our um, ERM solution has uh, basically databases associated with all these subjects. So in theory, you could build an interesting tool where you start entering a, a, a keyword search and it goes and does some calculations and said, here's the databases you're probably interested in using. So that's sort of a research and development area to see how feasible that would be. Um, and then some other future plans, obviously, increasing the size of the subject indices. And then also, um, you know, I'm curious whether other institutions would be interested in using a system like this. Of course, that would necessitate using a subject vocabulary that's, you know, not as specialized as ours is, but I'm definitely interested in doing that. Uh, more information can be found on, on this project site if you want to get some more gory details about how the system works. Um, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
just at first glance don't seem obvious. Uh, the other thing um, that's quite interesting is uh, in terms of the recommendations because of the nature of the concept that I'm in indexing, a lot of the recommendations are very institutionally sort of oriented. Meaning, if I use, let's say, MIT's course catalog and did a search for technology, I would get sort of a more broader set of recommendations. But when I do it at state, because of the articles that people are writing, it actually tends to be more agriculturally technology oriented, which is actually a very interesting byproduct, is that it's in theory more relevant to the user community that I'm trying to serve. So that's also another interesting uh, thing that I found in terms of these odd sort of matches that I'm getting. Yes. So in a way you're tailoring your, the way you uh, match subjects with the hit, uh, with, with the hit on, on the basis of what, what's on your university's website. But do you, do you have ideas about tailoring results on the basis of who you think the, the querying person is? Um, the way the system is built has no requirements, you know, no authentication requirements or anything like that. Um, so it's meant to be a very generic service. Um, I think you would need to know something about the user, yes. like what college they're in or something like that, but that would entail a large amount of overhead, I think, in terms of the application of people logging in and things of that nature. So um, it, has, it hasn't been something that I've really thought about too much. Yes? Um, why would that be useful? Well, if I'm, going, if I'm getting a list of places I might want to browse, I'd like to browse in the place that has the most stuff for my, my search term. I think the, the premise of the tool is that um, users don't necessarily identify with a particular subject category in terms of information search. But if the tool gives them some feedback regarding you know, what they might be interested in, then say, oh, yeah, I'd like to get some more information about crop science or sociology. Um, but in terms of, there's no sort of inherent connection about the number of resources associated with that category. It's really just a way of filtering of all the subjects that we have, filtering to the ones that might be most useful to them. So there's no, there's no underlying um, resource connection with those particular subjects. At least that's not how the system works. So how are they to determine what would be most useful? It would be an identification of whether, you know, if they're doing a search in a particular subject area, they'd say, oh, I might be interested in information about crop science. If they self-identify with those particular categories, they would go and find those. If they don't, then the system's not very useful to them. Okay. So they would really need to sort of identify with those subjects. Thank you. Um, can you take one more? Yes. Just uh, in defense of the zoology response, I think in some ways it's the most brilliant one of the lot because all the others were reasonably obvious and that one wasn't. But zoologists study invasive species and in, you know, illegal aliens, we tend to think of people, but in fact in the zoology world we're talking about zebra mussels and all sorts of other things that arrive in, in ecosystems where they're not supposed to be. And if that isn't an illegal alien, I don't know what is. So. Thank you for defending that. <laughs> <laughs> it's also um, an interesting thing, or, or this disambiguation in subjects. For example, if you search for bonds, you can get things related to finance, but you also get chemistry stuff too. So that's another uh, aspect of this, which is an interesting research area, is, to, is that disambiguation between different uses of search terms as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.